western part in Bonn. Of, in the western part of Germany, yes. Yeah. When, when was it exactly? Because uh, I will put yeah. some dates. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, it's the 24th of May, uh, yeah. uh, 1995. 95, okay, okay. Um, and uh, in 2012, I moved to Heidelberg, which is two hours south of Bonn, yeah. uh, to study medicine. Um, you were uh, 18 years old? Uh, I was 17 at that time. 17. So, I, I so that is a uh, second date, a uh, key date? Um, well, it, it was the first time I moved places in Germany. So until yeah. then, I had lived in Bonn, and I have never moved. And so did you do sport or things like yes. this? Yes. Um, so in my childhood, I was always, um, I have always done sports. So my first sport actually was uh, competitive swimming. Yeah. Um, and then I, it actually became quite training intense um, swimming because you need to train really like yeah, yeah, five no. or six times uh, a week. When you um, were even as like eight year old or so. Eight so, year old, yeah. Um, so I have two siblings. I have an elder brother and a younger sister, yeah. and they also had a couple of hobbies and. It, just became really difficult for my parents to handle all the dates. Um, yeah, yeah. So I started like, I, I quit swimming and then I started doing different other sports in between. Um, but one thing that has always been there was running. So I did marathons and half marathons um, already at, pr at a pretty young age. So I ran my first- Which, which age? Um, I my first half marathon I ran at 16. At 16 and, um, and uh, you remember the time? Mm -hmm, it was, uh, so my very first half marathon was a 2.8. 2.8 minutes. But um, my best half marathon time so far was a 134. 134. When you were? Uh, when I was. That was in twen When I was 19. 19. Yeah, yeah that was the 134. You and remember the date? It was. Uh, it was on. Uh, it was in April 2015. No. Oh. Yeah, it was in Bonn actually. <laughs> Bonn, <laughs> the the Bonn, Bonn half marathon <laughs> in 2015. And uh, I ran two marathons so far in my life, um, the fastest being 3.54, which is, I mean, it's not a record-breaking time, but it, it is a solid time uh. um, in the end. So running had always been like part Which of time for the marathon you did? 3.54. 3.54, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's, it's okay, but yeah. yeah, it's like not a record time. Um, and then in 2014, so after two years of medical school, I had a big exam. Uh, and um, I decided to do a big cycling tour afterwards, after this exam. And I cycled from um, Heidelberg to Stockholm. But just for fun? It was just for fun. So um, uh, actually my, my former boyfriend at that time, he was studying in Helsinki. Yeah. And I decided to travel to Stockholm by bike and oh, then love. set over. Oh, yeah. I love. <laughs> there is velo, you know? Yeah. And love. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was what I did. And I, I did it on a... Um, on a very heavy bike in the end. So it was a touring bike with pannier bags, yeah, and yeah. a lot of luggage. I packed so much civil clothing. It was just um, a very different kind of cycling than I am doing now. Yeah. Um, and that, that was five years ago. Um, so I got this touring bike. I was not trained at all, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I resume. So you, you did uh, swimming from 8 to 15 years no, old? No, I, I started swimming at 4 actually. I was oh, like, yeah, like just when you learn to swim. Yeah. And then I stayed in the, that club and that was probably until 10 years of age. It was not very long. It was just like 4 to 6 years of competitive swimming. And then I did... Yeah, really competitive swimming, but regional, local... Regional, regional. yeah. Regional. Never, never like German championships, but yeah. like regional championships and yeah. yeah. Um, but the swimming, yeah. I mean, swimming is a really competitive sport. Yeah, I know. Um, there is a lot of... Um, a lot competitive. of people. It's yeah. yeah, it's just really um, competitive. So you was a bit fed up and you begin to run at the age of... It had always been there, like maybe 10... Yeah, and then it was like, okay, so my school had a running team, um, yeah. and we always did this marathon in Bonn as a team together, yeah. so everyone runs five to ten kilometers, yeah. and I was part of this team every year, yeah. so this kept me kind of on the run, like on the running side. Yeah. And um, so I did this, this tour um, in 2014 to Stockholm. And uh, after this tour, a friend asked me to join her triathlon club because she was like, okay, you can swim, you can run, and now you can also ride a bike, okay. so join my club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, so I, I started doing triathlon. So I, yeah, at, at the age of 20? Twen yeah, yeah, approximately 20, yeah. Okay. Um, and then 
um, after about a year or so, I got a f my first racing bike. So until then, I I rode the triathlons on my touring bike, and it was yeah. just yeah. People laughed a bit at me because I came uh, with my like yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a huge bag on yeah. the handlebars. So yeah, it was it was a bit ridiculous, and. Um, yeah, so I got my first racing bike about three years ago. Yeah. Um, it was a pretty cheap bike, like 12 kilos heavy, yeah. aluminum, second hand. Uh, actually, the frame was broken from the beginning on. Yeah. I bought it for 250 euros. So it was like really, yeah, um, yeah not, not the best bike. But um, what changed with this bike was that actually I discovered going lighter is better for me. I, yeah, I yeah. just like getting rid of all the luggage uh. Uh, and also I like the long distances so yep. the distances just really quickly expanded and then um, in 2016 I believe I did a 350 kilometer day ride so I rode from Heidelberg to Zurich yeah. um, and what for? just for fun because I in that summer I didn't have so much time for any other like longer trips yeah. um, so I decided to do some day trips and then Zurich came to my mind it was just uh. I, I actually wanted to have a bath in this Lake Zurich there's yeah. this lake and, and it was before you after you you went and see your boyfriend yeah um, so at that time I, I, please don't write about my no, 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 no. It was uh, at that time I, I didn't have him anymore, so it was just I was going on my own all the oh, time. Okay, okay. Yeah, actually, all my cycling had had been on my own. I have never done a lot of cycling with anyone else. And uh, you, you, you did triathlon. Yes. You did, yes. You did more. Yeah. Yes, at that time I did triathlon, but I discovered pretty soon that um, that cycling is my strongest yes. of the three. Um, yeah. Uh, and that I'm. So in the triathlons, swimming was always my worst. So I would like get dropped in the yeah. swim and yeah. uh, get out of the water as one of the last ones. Yeah. And then on the cycling, um, on the cycling trip, I would, would capture most of them. <laughs> and then the run was like, okay, I was in the middle of the pack. But it was, it was. Yeah. Uh, I understand. It was a uh, Olympic triathlon or short. Yes, uh, I did uh, mostly Olympics. Oh, mostly Olympics. Some short ones and yeah. That's and you had a few good results. Um, yeah, I think like some age group wins, and so I, I won my age group category in the Heidelberg Man a yeah. couple of times. So yeah, and, and I, always in Germany. It was, yeah, all of them were in Germany. Yeah, yeah it was pretty regional. Like it, it was never high class or anything. Okay. Um, nothing really well known, to be honest. Um, yeah, and then so I did this three hundred fifty kilometer tour, and then sat down with some friends and. Um, uh, they they also cycle, but like very short distances. And yeah. They told me, hey, you are so crazy. You are doing 350 kilometers. How yeah. can you do it? We need to find something that you can't do um, distance-wise. We uh. need to find a challenge for you. And then they were like, hey, look at this. There is this Audax, London, Edinburgh, London, where you go from London to Edinburgh and back. And that took place in... Edinburgh, Edinburgh in... Um, Scotland. In Scotland, okay. Yeah. So that's uh, 1,450 kilometers. Yeah. And uh, there's a time limit. It's an Audax event. It's so an Audax event. Yeah. 24. Like Paris Brest Paris. Like for, um, 24 k's an hour. It's limit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, so you have uh, like a time limit. Um, uh, it was 117 hours, I believe, for that distance. Um, and yeah. So. I registered and I took part in that in 2017, and that was actually my first long distance okay. um, cycling. Yeah, and you stu trip. studied in 2017. You still study? I, I studied still. Yeah. 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 So I, I, uh, I finished medical school this year. Yeah. It's medical school, so you are medical. I'm a doctor. You are a doctor. Yeah. So it's how long? How long is it to, to be a doctor? It's, uh, um, it's six and a half years. Six and a half years. Yeah. So you are a doctor. I'm a doctor now, and I'm starting to work as a surgeon. Um, in in September. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. But you are a doctor. I'm a doctor. Yeah. Uh, medicine, we say. Yeah. Well, okay. 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 <laughs> medicine. Okay, because a bit many people say you work into search for the cancer. Yeah. So I did cancer research while I studied. Yeah, um, but you so are. It's, but yeah. your study is but to be doctor. But in principle, I'm a doctor. My profession is a doctor. Yeah. yeah. Good point. <laughs> good point. Yeah. So you 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 do that competition or uh, that uh, that thing in in England? In England, exactly. In um, that was in 2017. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then actually. That was actually my only 
long distance experience before the transcontinental. So on this ride in England, um, someone told me, hey, you are a strong cyclist, you should really have a look at the transcontinental race. Um, yeah, someone, yeah, someone just you told two me. years ago yeah. of this, this thing. Yeah, exactly. And um, the interesting thing was that the transcontinental race in 2017 took place at exactly the same time as this London, Edinburgh, London thing. Yeah. Um, so when I got back home from, from England, I checked this homepage immediately and I saw the race going on. So it was uh, like still on. It was yeah. in the last days. And I could follow back like from the start what happened and yeah. um, I was pretty immediately hooked and knew that I wanted to do it at some point. Okay. Um, and then last year was a bit um, more difficult, so it was my last year of medical school yeah. and I so the last year consists of internships yes. um, and I moved around a lot so I did them um, not only in Heidelberg where I studied but I did them in Dresden and in Texas in, in America as in well. Texas you um, went, yeah, yeah, so I, I was in Texas for four months. Um, so I didn't have like that much flexibility. And so last year I just didn't manage to, to enter the and race. And I suppose during you, you did this, uh, this uh, English... Mm -hmm. uh, London, so, Edinburgh. So, London. Sorry for, yeah. my, uh, for my English. Don't worry. And, uh, but you train every time you ride your bike. You... It's just a training program you do, you do or every day you do bike or um, how do you manage? So before London, Edinburgh, London, yeah. my, in that year, actually my longest ride was 200 kilometers, yes. so pretty short actually. And you do you do that you know, in a Sunday or yeah, when you can? Yeah, that would be a weekend ride. Um, oh. So actually I, I feel like I don't really train that much. Okay. Um, so before London, Edinburgh, London, yeah. I had only... 1,500 kilometers that year, which is really not a lot. 1,500 only? Yes, no, And when, uh, when was it? Um, that was in August. Yeah. In August, so 100,000 before I that. I had not ridden a lot. But you still yeah. run uh, no, on, only bike? A bit, but not a lot, really. No, like not I a didn't lot. train a lot. Because there was practically no training. Yeah, not, not so much, to be honest. Yeah, so yeah. I, I did ride my bike, but it was just not not very focused training or okay. not a lot especially okay. and this year also so before the TCR I had only 6,000 kilometers 6,000 from the 1st January yeah from like in 2019 from 1st of January to the start of the TCR yeah. I had about 6,000 6, kilometers which yeah. is not a lot no, no, so I compared no. to a couple of other people and yeah. they had like 15,000 so yeah, yeah. more than almost yeah. three times what I had and uh, yes yeah and um so you went so little. Why, why you do that? Why? Why are you doing that? Why was I doing TCR? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, why, why are you doing such things? It's an adventure for me. So, so the, the, the thing that I loved most about it is that it makes you go to places that you wouldn't go otherwise. So okay. traveling to Bulgaria to cycle there is just really far away from a middle European's thought, okay. usually. So that would not be the first country I would think of when yeah. uh, thinking of, oh, I'm going on a cycling trip. Uh -huh. um, and also, um, like, Serbian gravel mountains, that's something that is really far away. It makes you dream. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's it. And um, so I, I wanted to explore new places uh -huh. and um, the Transcontinental is just a really well-organized event, uh -huh. I felt. Um, so you went by uh, by plane? Or to Burgas, yeah. To Bulgaria, I got by plane, and um, you had a new bike. I haven't, yeah, a pretty new bike. When, when did you buy it? Because you said I uh, bought it uh, uh, in middle of May. Yeah. This, this year. Yeah, this year. <laughs> and before you had a. Um, I had another bike, so it was so this year I rode disc brakes, for example, yeah. and um, electrical shifting. Okay. And before I had a bike with mechanical shifting and um, caliper brakes. Um, yeah, so I, I got this bike for TCR. Yeah, and you begin to, uh, I suppose as a doctor, you begin to, to worry about heart rate, about things like this? Fat no. rate? Uh, uh, heart rate. Oh, heart rate, ah, yeah. Um, so I have been riding with a heart rate monitor yeah. for a while, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. Um, but I have not... Um, I I don't have a power meter, for example. Yeah. Um, 
which is something a lot of writers have. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have one. You don't have, okay. Um, and I'm, I'm also actually not keeping an eye on my heart rate so much because I actually, I mean, I know if I'm breathing like this, <laughs> yeah. I know it's exhausting. And okay, if I'm okay. not, it's not exhausting. Yeah, it's, so just, uh, it's a lot of feeling, actually. A lot of feeling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you don't know, by example, uh, what was your heart rate at the end? Uh, it was no, 100 or 120? I really have no idea. You don't, no. you don't give a mind? No, no. Not, not really. I mean, I'm, 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 I do register it. it, but it doesn't matter to me so much. So during the ride, I didn't check it. So you register nothing about not your ride? Not really. Not really. I'm, okay. I, the distance is very important. So yeah. for me, it's like important to know where I am in the day. Uh, and. Um, you are, uh, so you explained to me, a single woman, you, are, you have no girlfriend, uh, no, no? And, and you have a family around you, your two brothers? I have a, an older brother and yeah. a younger sister. Yeah, and your family followed that? You yeah, are... um, my family has been following, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you, you do not live anymore with them, you are... No, I'm, I'm not living with them since seven years now, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, 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 it's just, uh, and um, many of the uh, of, of people who ride, uh, as them, by example, there is a Brittany guy, a guy from Brittany here. Yeah, and, uh, Alexandre I, Leroux, yes, right, yeah. <laughs> Alexandre, and uh, he's 37 years old, and they say, uh, you have seen, uh, she's in the front, and they say, uh, you had a really, you, you were a really very good method, me uh -huh. methodic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, how did you did you prepare that? Uh, by example, your Strava, your road. How did, did you prepare that? To choose your road and things ah, like this. Okay. Um, so I I used different apps. So I used uh, like route planning apps. Yeah. Um, I used um, on the friends one apps. Hmm? Friends apps. You, you no, work? I used um, Gypsies. Yeah. Um, I used Strava for some segments and okay. Komoot. Yeah. Yeah. And you prepared your way a lot before? Um, no, not, well, maybe some two months before, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because uh, Alexandre, by example, he, he told me that he put on Strava his, uh, his trip. Yeah. And he just followed, and he spent uh, 30 hours to prepare everything mm -hmm. and to put mm -hmm. in... Uh, the it took a lot of time, the, the planning. Did you do that? Yes, I do that. I did that too. So I... Um, I usually clicked click the route and yeah. compared. So usually you start off with just giving the start point and the end point, yeah. um, and then it gives you some kind of route. But it may be a very hilly one, but a short one, so or it may be a short, a longer one, but a not so hilly one. So and you have to choose a good yeah, one. You need to choose a, a good one in the end. And what was your criteria to choose? Um, short, of course, or? short, of course, short. But I tried to avoid steep climbs in yeah. the end. So I, I tried to um, start off with the shortest road and yeah. then like even out the climbs. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, to avoid the city too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, for example, I cycled around Lyon. Yeah. Or I cycled uh, around Belgrade and Novi yeah. Sad. Yeah, because Alexander was straight into Belgrade oh, yeah. and he told me he spent maybe four hours into Belgrade. Oh, no, yeah, I, I knew that the, the Balkan cities may be very crowded. So the only city I cycled through was Sofia, yeah. so the Bulgarian capital, which was really good because it was on a Sunday morning yeah, yeah. and there was not much traffic. So, um, yeah, that was fine. And... Uh, uh, can you describe me an ordinary day? In my life? <laughs> no, 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 oh, not in your in life. TCR. <laughs> in TCR. In your life, I suppose you do medicine, yes. Yeah. In, in your life, you just, do, you, you are a doctor, so yeah. you, <laughs> what, what do you do in ordinary life? What, what is it? So as a medical student, um, I would wake up at some point in the morning, usually like seven-ish, uh -huh. um, then... Um, so the last year was internships mainly, so yeah. I worked in the hospital, yeah, so I so. usually had to be there at 7.30 or 8 yeah. in the morning, and then stayed there until the evening working yeah. on a ward and like so helping the doctors yeah. and trying to learn as much as possible. Yeah. And then in the evening I would get home, and um, so I would often go for a run before the clinic, so That's wake good. up very early. Yeah. Um, I'm actually an early bird person, um, and... Sometimes I would run in the evening. So in the winter, I usually run more and I cycle less because yeah, the winters are really run. snowy. Yeah. Yeah. 
I still run. I still run. Uh, How many? For example, you said you did uh, 16 kilometers before, 1,016, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 16,000 kilometers before the... No, I did 6,000. 6, 6,000. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, running -wise? Running, uh, 600 many, uh, kilometers. 600. Yeah. So 6,000 and 600. Yeah, approximately. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's easy to remember. That's actually also how and I... And 60 can... hours of swimming. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no swimming at no all. No swimming at all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and uh, yes, and can you describe me an, an ordinary day during your TCR? During TCR. <laughs> um, so let's take a day from the middle, like because the first yeah, day okay, was okay, a bit, okay, okay. yeah. So I would usually, so out of the ten nights, I slept outside eight of the nights. So I was in hotels for two nights, yeah. and eight nights were outside in a sleeping bag. So. I would say usually I woke up in a sleeping bag, <laughs> yeah. um, and then that was usually after about three to four hours of sleep. I usually went to bed about between one and two in the morning, yeah. um, so I woke up between four and five in the morning. Okay. I had an alarm clock, so yeah, yeah the alarm woke me up, um, and then I would pack my stuff together. Um, I usually tried to have something to eat on the bike for breakfast so that I could just start eating something. Um, on the bike? On the bike, yeah. I, I didn't actually eat a lot off the bike. I, okay. I usually had my food on the bike. On the bike. Um, and then I would... Did you, you were used to that or not? Um, I, of course, usually I sit down at a table for, yeah. for food, but um, uh, I don't have any problems with eating on no the problem. bike. No problems at all. What did you eat? Um, so I, for breakfast, I usually try to have bananas. Yeah. I, I really like to eat bananas on the bike. And then anything I could find in principle. So um, I tried to keep it as normal as possible. So usually I would buy my food at supermarkets yes. and uh, jump in, get some sandwiches um, yes. and uh, bananas. And then, of course, all the crap too. So chocolate, uh, candy, anything that gives you calories in principle. Um, With sugar or sugar, salt. yeah, a lot of like a lot of sugary stuff. A lot of sugary yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I, I usually tried to eat a lot of sandwiches too, sandwiches and too. also I drank milky drinks like cocoa, like hot, cho like chocolate drinks. Yes. Um, yeah, because it, they also have like some calories, and um, they, they, yeah, they are easy to like drink on the bike. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So um, nothing special so, uh, with no, the dietetics uh, No, I, I really had like no food special, no special things. Food. No special food. What you find in the shop. What I find in the shop. And oh. when you go in the shop to buy that, you quick? It's that, I'm uh, really quick. So yeah. that's, uh, that's something I've talked about to many people. So maybe I'm quicker than others in the shops because... Okay. Um, so you go in the bike, I, with the yeah, bike? So usually I would, I, w I mean, when I run out of food, I knew that I needed to buy more. So I knew that maybe in 10 kilometers I go to a supermarket. Yeah. And then I tried starting to make this list in my mind, uh. um, like, okay, what do I need? I need three bananas, mm. I need um, two bars of chocolate, I need um, some Snickers and two sandwiches. Yeah, your, then I would your just, hard drive. Yeah, my head is like, yeah. like there's a list, and then yeah. I would go into this, I, I'm extremely organized, and then I would go into this shop and go like, okay, I have three bananas, I have two sandwiches, like, Take it off the list. Um, okay, and you pay and... And pay and... I, I also just would try to pack it all into my jersey. Yeah. And just rush off and eat it on the bike. And okay. not eat it at the supermarket. You always have in your mind, I have to go quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always, always. Yeah. I have to win. It's a race in the end. Yeah, it's a race. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, there is a question about uh, your... Yeah. your Because you, you must feel uh, like a competitor. A you bit, like yeah. it. But I have to say that changed during the race as well. So I was, uh, yeah, I was really surprised yeah. to be so far in front. I would never have expected to win this no. race. Um, it's and a actually, surprise for you. It is a complete surprise. Um, so the actually, I only started racing on the third day, I think, because so in the beginning I just started like cycling and. Um, then I reached checkpoint one. Um, and, and you was how many? Second? Uh, on the checkpoint one, you, are, you was second or...? No, uh, on the first checkpoint, I, so 
people t started interviewing me and they were like, oh, do you actually know how many people have been here before you? Yeah. And I was like, no, I don't know, maybe like 20. And they were like, no, you're number six. Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's like really top 10. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Um, and then I, I reached the second checkpoint and they were like, oh, now you're number four. Um, and then at the third... It was in Italy, the second checkpoint. The second was in Serbia. Serbia, yeah. Serbia. Um, and then the, there was a very long stretch to Italy, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was over a thousand kilometers. And then I became first in the, in the third checkpoint. So your, your average was 19, 20, 24, 20, 24 average when you are on your bike? I have no idea about No that. idea. It's really about, I think it's about 19, if you um, calculate everything. And when you was on your bike, you did not look and see the average or... I did not. I think it's on Strava. Um, so I have yeah, uploaded everything. You have, not you have not seen it. Yeah. Um, I, I can check if you want. But, yeah, we, um, we will do that after. Yeah, no. we can do that after. Is that, that's, I, that's, that's quite interesting to, to know what would I like is have a summary. I mean, uh, I start from this day to this day, and the average is 19, by example, yeah. and when I was on my bike, generally it was 24 hours, uh, uh, the average, you see? You see? Okay. On yeah. the bike it was yeah. 24, on the yeah. global things, because for people, yeah. it. Uh, yeah. you can imagine in 10 days, you can go from here to here yeah. at 19 uh, kilometers an hour. hour. Yeah, yeah. You, you understand? Oh, 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 you don't mean the heart rate, you mean the speed. 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 Oh, yeah. So the speed was, um, uh, in the beginning, it was faster, of course. So yeah. in the beginning, it was between 27 and 29. Um, yeah. All the time? No. Average. It, it, it was, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was hilly in yeah, the beginning. Yeah, it was really so, hard. Yeah. Um, it's hard to compare, really, because in the beginning there were hills, and then yes. in the flat through Serbia, I was like 28 yeah. kilometers per hour. And then in France, where it was flat again, yeah. it was only 23. Yeah. So I think overall it was approximately 23. On the bike? On the bike, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Did you feel alone? What was your feeling on your bike? No, I didn't feel alone. Never um, feel alone? In your head, you said you always think about what you have to eat, yeah. where you go, and, and uh, I have to win after the... Um, I didn't really think that I have to win. I really thought about like enjoying the thing. Like um, I thought about how interesting it is to see how the world looks after the next mountain or how it looks from above the mountain. Even during 18 Even, hour, yeah. uh, because yeah. it was nearly the average 18 hour on the bike. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Uh. Um, so to me, it, it was really an amazing journey to see all the places. Uh -huh. And I, I never felt alone, I would say. Uh. I mean, also- But in your head. No, not at Did all. Did you have special things? Your family uh, okay. or, um, like or your life or the, the fact to be doctor? Um, because, you know, there is a, a sort of, of a big thing too with, uh, you know, in the snow now, yeah. uh, in the Arctic and uh, uh -huh. people, uh, but uh, with motor, yeah. and there are many things. And you have you special things? It's hard to say. Um, Really, I mean, I spend, it, it sounds ridiculous, but I spend a lot of time calculating distances, like yeah. numbers in my head. Yeah. Um, so I usually have a look at how far have I gone already, what speed do I need to make to be at the next checkpoint tomorrow, yeah. um, how far do I need to go today, what distance is left if I go to this city now and have some food. So it's it's like, All the time like I'm this. calculating a yeah. lot. Um, yeah. But then, uh, so that is like one point of it, which is a really stupid thing, but I do it a lot. No, no, um, it's not stupid, then, it's just uh, to, to know what, what, yeah. what was in your head. Um, so, and other than that, there's really not a lot in my head. I, I, I start not thinking anything at some point. It, it was basic it's, and... Uh, it's just really basic and it's really empty, to be honest. Um, yeah. So I start, um, of course, there's sometimes like thoughts about my life or friends or family no. or what, anything, but not so much really, um, like really not a lot. Um, I, no, really, I can't think of a certain And you had, you had no problem with your bike, with your material? Um, so I, 
had to, I mean, I had some punctures in Serbia. You had some punctures, how many? Yeah, three. Three. You had um, 32, the um, section? With tubes, yeah. So it was 28 millimeters. 28. Yeah. Um, Continental GP5000. Um, how, how tall are you? 100 and, uh, how, how tall are you? I'm 167. 167. Yeah. And uh, uh, what is your weight? If it's it's if uh, 58 kilos 58. usually. Okay. So um, I think it's a bit less now. <laughs> I, I, yes, I, you lose I did, you lose weight. I did lose weight, so I, I had I, I I didn't weigh myself um, yeah. now, but I put my cycling shorts on and they are really loose. So. <laughs> so what, what did you take your your package your uh, the weight of your bike with with everything? Um, I haven't weighed it. No. Um, but I think it is probably between 13 and 14 kilos in total with the packages. 13 and 14 kilos? Yeah, between 13 and 14 kilos. What did you take with you? So you mm -hmm. had your, you yeah, had so your dress yeah. clothes uh, of cycling mm -hmm. with your hat? Yeah, um, and then I had, in my front bag, I had um, a rain jacket, um, uh, arm warmers, oui. leg warmers, okay. um, then a, a very tiny backpack, um, just for shopping, because yeah. if I if I needed a lot of stuff, um, then some cream like jammy cream, yeah. um, some wet wipes, baby wipes yeah. for yeah, just hygiene, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, what else? Spare lights, a front light and a rear light. Um, you add the battery into your hub. Um, it was USB charged. USB charge uh -huh. and uh, yeah. yes, and, and yeah. okay, okay, okay. I also had a hub, um, yeah, yeah, with a with a USB yeah, okay. socket, yeah, okay. um, and and someone help you for your bike, to prepare um, it. Yeah, so I um, I was really lucky to um, meet Bjorn Lenhardt. Bjorn, who, okay, yeah, that I saw. He is, yeah, so he is in Dresden as well, and I kind of bumped into him when I moved to Dresden. Um, before 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 the race. Yeah, it was like so. Um, I moved to Dresden in end of March and then I, um, so for Paris Best Paris, I did the qualification brevets. So ah, there was a qualification brevet? Yeah. Which one was it? Uh, I, I didn't know there was a qualification. Okay, yeah, you have to, so to qualify for Paris Best Paris, you need to do 200, ah, yeah, 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 200, 300, 300, 400 and 600. You did that? Yes, I did that. I, I'm also riding Paris Best Paris next week. Uh, you, you ride that Yeah, too. I, I'm oh, riding it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will be back in Brest. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it's cool. I'm I really, didn't know. I, I'm looking forward to it. it uh -huh. It's so good. Um, so I did that in Saxony. So and this Paris Best Paris, it's, uh, it's an ODAX too. It is, yeah. It is not a free... No, it's, it's an, an ODAX, it's yeah. An ODAX. It's not a race. In, and, yeah. With a group. Yeah. It's, you can ride in groups, yeah. Or it's, you can ride alone. However you like it. Uh, yeah. Uh. yeah. Um, so I um, you, you you do it alone? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh. yeah. I'm doing it on my own. Um, so I um, I kind of so I went to this 200 kilometer Audax event, so yeah. the, this qualification brevet, uh, which was near Dresden. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I wore my London Edinburgh London jersey, and people asked me, okay, wow, you have done this, uh -huh. so what are you up to this year? And I was like, um, yeah, I'm doing P Paris Brest Paris, but I'm also doing TCR, the Transcontinental Race. Are you crazy? And, yeah, and they, they were like, oh, wow, you're crazy, you need to talk to Björn. And then I was like, oh, wait. Who is Björn? This, like, yeah, uh -huh. the, like the, the Björn or who? You, um, you knew him? I, I mean, I had followed the TCR for ah, okay. the, the two years before, so I knew he's that... He's a star, so Bjorn is a star, I, I, sort of star. I knew star. that he is like a strong German rider, okay. but I had no idea he was living in Dresden. And it turned out that he lives in the same city as I live now. So, so it's really good. Yeah, it was... So we, we went on a couple of training rides before. Okay. And um, he also kind of gave me some tips because he's really experienced. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he also helped me a bit with the bike. Yeah, to be a bit more professional. Exactly, yeah. So, so, so in your bag, so you said uh, anything else, the brush teeth? Yeah, exactly, the, the hygiene pack, <laughs> which was um, a toothbrush, uh, some, like, cream, yeah. um, and uh, what else did I pack? Nothing for the eye. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I had some, actually, I had some eye drops, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. artificial tears, because yeah. the wind is really, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. drying my eyes, and I had some drops for okay. it. Um, okay, that was my front bag, and then the rear bag was um, my sleeping bag, um, four spare tubes, a spare tire, and, like, my mechanical stuff, so um, cable tie. The minimum. 
the minimum. Yeah. Well, your clothes only. only I had only one, like one oh. set. <laughs> only one, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes when it dry, uh, you yeah, it was, uh, and you washed nothing during ten days. Um, I washed twice. I mean, I, I slept in hotels twice, and when, when I slept when day? on day three and day seven. Three and seven. So. Um, and when I slept in hotels, I washed my clothes also. And so. you went in a hotel, you said, click, 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 can I sleep here, and I pay, and I sleep? Mm -hmm, yeah. There was no phone, phone call before? Um, so, for the first night that was in Serbia, yeah. um, I, I didn't phone before, I just went there, yeah, yeah. and it, they were like, okay, yeah, it's 10 euros, just uh, okay. sleep here, it's, it's fine. Um, and the second one was um, in, uh, at the Col du Galibier, yeah. um, and... Uh, there I phoned before because yeah. I knew that it's a touristy region and it might be booked. And, oh, so yeah. it's on your bike that you check which hotel you could... Uh, exactly, I would go to booking.com on, on my phone. Yeah, um, you, had, you, had, you had a phone, a Strava, a Strava computer, what are the... I, a Garmin. Yeah. A Garmin, a Garmin and a phone, that's all? Yeah, that's all. Okay, yeah. okay. So, um, now uh, it's about um, the fact to be uh, a woman, you know. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, in the world, I study a lot and there are many people who look and he says that performances for a woman are 9% less average in statistics than uh, men mm -hmm. and 17% uh, if you consider endurance sports, generally. Mm -hmm. So it means maybe you were here and you were one of the best women mm -hmm. and you did not compete mm -hmm. in this competition with the, with the best men. What do you think? Uh, because many people are astonished she beat men. You know, mm -hmm. she's, she's, uh, it's, it's a question, maybe a silly question, mm -hmm. but uh, what could you say about that? Like me as a woman beating a no, man? No, like you. Uh, people would say, many people say uh, she's a woman, she beat men. It's, it seems, uh, why? How? Is she special? Uh, or? So to me, to be honest, I mean, in endurance sports, we know that women. So, the, the point is, I think in cycling, if it's short distances, yeah. like sprints, yeah. it's often a game of testosterone, like who has the biggest testosterone levels. Yeah, yeah. And of course, women have a disadvantage there because yeah. the testosterone levels are just not as yeah. high. Um, but when it comes to ultra endurance rides, like the yeah. TCR, it is not only the physical ability, yeah. but it's also like a mental game, I think. Yeah. And I think, I, I mean, I, I know that mentally I am very strong. Yeah, and you um, I, I think I have the mindset for, for doing such competitions. Um, and the good thing about the endurance sports is that in the end it is not only testosterone. It is not only the training-wise aspect, but it's also the route planning. It is how long can you sleep deprive yourself. And you don't sleep a lot. I didn't sleep a lot. I, I slept... Four, f I rested four to five hours a day. Four and five hours, yeah, yeah, and uh, in it there is uh, when you go shopping. Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and uh, you used to that uh, when you are studying as a doctor, or um, do I you think sleep I a lot? I don't sleep a lot in my everyday life, so my usual sleep would be s between six and seven hours. Yeah, that's why. Which is not a lot, and I think I'm just used to being a bit sleep deprived or maybe I, I just don't need so much sleep. Um, yeah, be because as a doctor, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are many, uh, you have to work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 when uh, you went. Yeah. Okay, 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 good, okay. Um, and um, what's the report? What is your good souvenir? The best souvenir of uh, uh, the yeah. entire race? Um, Best souvenir. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, so I think the Alps. Really, I, I really loved cycling in the Alps. Uh. Um, they included some really nice mountain passes, so Paso Gardena, mm. and um, uh, also the Col du Galib Galibier. It was just really amazing climbs, and I I loved cycling the mountains. Um, yeah, but also Bulgaria. Bulgaria was amazing. Um, I loved seeing that countryside just and what you see in your eyes yes what i saw it, it is all like but you did not meet you did not meet many people too no not uh, you did I not didn't, speak a lot no i didn't speak a lot uh, but nothing I, miss no <laughs> not at all 
It, it, seeing the world is enough for me. Yeah. yeah. You like people or not? I like people. I mean, I'm a doctor. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it's kind of my profession. <laughs> I need to like people. You need to like people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but during when you ride bike, you don't like people. I do like people when yeah. I ride the bike, but I, I am also good on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. can be on my own. And, and uh, were you afraid sometimes to, to fail or things like this? You understand? I understand, but I didn't. I, I was not afraid to fail. When you knew you were, you was the first. In your head, it was I have to finish first because I am first. I mean, you need to finish first to finish first. So um, yeah. you need to reach the finish line. Um, but you, so you, you like that to, to be first. You did. You, you did like it. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, but in your mind, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, natural. Yeah. You are not a comp. Yeah. yeah. It is a. I mean, it is a race in the end, and I. I do like to race, yes. <laughs> you, you like to yeah. race. But, I mean, it was my first bike race in my life. Yeah, it so, was your first um, bike race in your life, yeah. So, I, I was not used to and you racing. I, I have no idea, but, um, yeah, I liked being first, yes. And <laughs> do you, are you interested, because you went to mythic uh, area, like the Alpe d'Huez, mm -hmm. it is cycling, you know, maybe you know Jan Ulrich? Mm -hmm. You, you you heard of it before? Of course, I have heard of him. I, I don't I, yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. And and uh, and do, do you like uh, uh, the pro, pro cycling? The pro cycling. Hmm. I mean, it is a very different sport to what we are doing here. Yeah. Um, but do you like the spirit? And it's hard to say, really. I I'm a strong anti-doping person I really um that's another good me too you know yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So I, I, <laughs> that's why I come because some people say to me hey, Antoine uh, she must do but uh, ask her the question okay I ask no, I, I, you can draw my bloods yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really I mean um I yeah that is something I really don't like about pro sports that um I mean as soon, is a as, liar. Soon, as soon as there is money involved as yeah. soon as people live from it okay. there is so much pressure um, for me, cycling is a hobby. Yeah. I, I do it because I enjoy it. Okay. Um, and I, I feel like for me, there would never be, I, I would never risk my health yeah. for this sport. I would never um, take any substances that would risk my life yeah. potentially. Um, because going through this endurance event um, just puts a lot it just puts enough pressure on the body already so um, why should I take any more substances like risking my life yeah, yeah. Um, and that is the big difference between pro sports and endurance cycling events and you are like, not interested in pro sport and uh... actually no I, I enjoy my life as it is and I like cycling as a hobby but I would never do it as a pro and by example because no maybe uh, you will be able to meet uh, a bit a bit famous, a bit known, you know, maybe. And uh, if people uh, give you money to, to to make a ride or a race, uh, would, would you accept that? I... For example, if I say to you, you will do the Trans America, are you ready? And I give you uh, 20,000 euros and you make the Trans America with my color and with my... Uh... To be honest, I don't want to be paid for cycling. Okay. I would, I mean, I don't have any sponsors at all. Yes. Um, so I, of course, would appreciate getting kit or a bike or yeah. whatever, like like uh, material from, yeah. from um, sponsors, but I would not take any money, to uh. be honest. Uh. Um, as much as I would, yeah, I, I, I just don't want to do this as a commercial thing. Okay. Um, I, because you will work in September. Exactly. I, I, you begin I, to work. What I do have my job. Yeah. And which, I, which job will, will it be in September? A, a surgeon. So I will train to be a surgeon. Surgeon. A surgeon. Uh, Operatic. Ah. Uh, right. les, les operations. You will train to do. To I will do be that. training to be an operator. Yeah. It's uh, hey, it's two years more things like this. Chirurgien. Chirurgien, you call oui, it. Oui, chirurgien. Yeah. Chirurgien. Your French is quite good. <laughs> un peu. <laughs> so, je prie, je suis doux. Tu parles français. <laughs> un peu. <laughs> un peu. Um, un peu. Oui. And uh, so, you have a um, uh, sort of spirit ultra competition. And uh, yes, so your project. Your, uh -huh. your, yeah. yeah, my next project. <laughs> your next project is Paris-Brest-Paris. Paris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it's in incredible. And you, your body, it feels good? You feel good? Or? Right now it feels yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm really recovered. Uh, Bepantane does the job. <laughs> yes, yeah. so you, yes, you, you, you was not uh, completely destroyed and you did um, not feel... Uh, I didn't, so actually, so someone asked me if I ever felt dizzy or yeah. weird in my head and actually what I kept telling them is actually at any moment in the race yeah. I could have phoned my employer and talked about my contract or, yeah, yeah. so I, I never felt disoriented or dizzy, so I really felt good the whole ride, it, uh, it was, uh. I could enjoy it really, um, I loved it, it, uh. it was an amazing journey. And you know it's quite funny because you are in Brest, so there is mm -hmm. Brest Prairie too, yeah. and in Brest, and one of my sons is sailing, mm -hmm. and here are the most famous, some of the most mm -hmm. famous sailor mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, by example, uh, there are many winners of the race alone uh, the world, mm -hmm. which is quite uh, 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 the same as ultra. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they have to choose their way. Yeah. They are alone. They have to take a little risk, but not not so much. And it's uh, <laughs> my kid. How many kids do you want to have? Wow, that's a tough question. Uh, I don't know. Not have not thought about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> During your ride, you don't sound to think about kids. No, I don't think about kids on my ride. No. <laughs> Uh, so, so there is a sort of bridge between um, between uh, between uh, what you do and uh, and sailing. Uh -huh. Many common points. So, so maybe me the article I will do is about that. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. and about the spirit, yeah. the, the same spirit. And maybe uh, there are many sailors. You know, there is a uh, French woman sailor who won uh, the race. Uh, comment s'appelle Florence, Florence Arto. Mm -hmm. You you've heard of it? Uh, of no, her? Not yet. Florence Arto is a woman. Uh, it was uh, 20 years ago, something like this. She won uh, the race uh, from. Uh, uh, so it's a famous race from uh, France to, to Route du Rhum, mm -hmm. and it's uh, yeah, it was nearly 10 days at this period, and alone, mm -hmm. and and she beat. All the all the men, mm -hmm. so it's you see it's a very, similar story. Yeah, it's a similar story because it is endurance, mm -hmm. and but not a lot of uh, it's uh, and, and it's the same proportion yeah. with bike. Yeah. You are we were forty, yeah. you know, men were two hundred or something yeah. like this. And for sailing, it's nearly the same. They are not a lot, you know, yeah. but some are really really good, yeah. you know, and there is no difference. In fact, uh, 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 yes. Uh, so there is many yeah. similarities. Similarities, yeah. And um, uh, and uh, so your project, yeah, is we were on the Paris project. Paris, Paris. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after? Um, I really haven't thought about it, but I think I will be back at the transcontinental race next year. Next year. Um, and other than that, let's just see what happens. I I don't know. I not. I don't have so many plans right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just start working and um, yeah. But I, of course, I, I would like to stay a part of this cycling community, and I, I really enjoy endurance cycling. And b because you speak with the other and so on, you like them and you like uh, the spirit. It is very welcoming and very warm. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is a great spirit. I I, I love this community. It's, it's, it's a community great. of uh, special yeah. of, uh, yeah. of uh, ultra endurance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and uh, your project uh, after <laughs> a house? Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> like the really big project. Yeah, the really big project. I mean, uh, at, some, your death. <laughs> at, at some point in my life, I, I will for sure have a family and like. Uh, yeah. But, but actually, I'm I'm not so keen on a house to be honest because I uh, I, I like being flexible in my life and yeah. like. I feel like renting apartments makes you more flexible than if you yeah. buy a house and yes, have a yes, house yes. standing somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, yeah. So at some point in my life, I, I guess I will, I, I will probably buy. Um, how do you call it? It's um, that that kind of big car where you can sleep inside as well. Camping car. Yeah, a camping car. I I will buy a camping car and um, probably like spend my holidays in that camping car. Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it makes you most flexible and you can pack a bike into it and then ride off that camping car. <laughs> okay. 
uh, I think it's it's good. And have you got something to add uh, through your experiment? What, what could you say to people to engage them, men or women? <laughs> women would be good. And uh, what would be your your message? Um, just do it. I mean. Um, don't think limits. It's it's all about um, about crushing your own limits. If you if you have your limits and think you are you cannot cross that line, you you will not be able to do something. Maybe you won't be able to do it. But just 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 try it and um, and if you if you just just do what you enjoy and enjoy enjoy it all. So for me. The thing that drove me through the whole ride was just enjoying, enjoying the entire journey and, yeah, loving yeah. what I did. So, yeah. Uh.